and it will allow us to study the very first galaxies that formed in the universe. I'm Dr. Mark Clampin. I'm the Director of Sciences and Exploration here at the Goddard Space Flight Center. I came to NASA from the Space Telescope Science Institute, and I basically started my career working on technology to help find planets around other stars. James Webb is quite simply the largest space telescope that we've ever launched to do astrophysics in space. My role when I joined the Goddard Space Flight Center to work on James Webb was serving as the observatory project scientist. Uh, I sometimes refer to it as the science police, working with the engineers to make sure that all the science requirements for the observatory, which is the telescope, and then all of the hardware that makes the telescope work, met its science goals. The big technical challenge is to do the science are trying to build a telescope that's much bigger than its precursor, which was the Hubble Space Telescope. So we went from a two and a half meter size mirror on Hubble to a six and a half meter size with the James Webb Space Telescope. And James Webb, unlike Hubble, which basically is designed to work in the ultraviolet and the visible, the James Webb was designed to work in the infrared, and that is heat radiation. And one of the major challenges anytime you build a telescope to work in the infrared is that you cannot see your own thermal signature. So the big challenge has been to design a telescope that will cool to about 40 degrees above absolute zero so that the only signal that Webb is detecting is from the objects that we're trying to study. And the design that we came up with is what we call passive cooling. Underneath it, we have this array of Kapton membranes. Kapton is the same kind of material that they make birthday balloons out of. The backside of these membrane layers are always looking at the sun which means the telescope is always looking out into space and that way it can cool down to this operating temperature of about 40 degrees above absolute zero. Another big challenge has been how do we actually fit a telescope this big inside a rocket fairing and that has required us to actually fold up the telescope and these membranes so that it's kind of like a reverse origami puzzle. And once we launch and we deploy the telescope, we then unfold and unpack everything. So there's a lot of really interesting technical challenges on this telescope. With the Hubble Space Telescope, we've taken these very deep images of what look like blank areas on the sky called the deep fields. And when we collect light for a very long time with Hubble, what we find is that those so-called blank areas are actually full of galaxies. And with Hubble, we've been able to track these galaxies back to something like a billion years after the Big Bang occurred. Unfortunately, because the light is so redshifted, if we want to look further back all the way to the period about one to 300 million years after the Big Bang, we have to do the observations in the infrared because all the light from these very first galaxies is redshifted into the infrared. We also know that these galaxies can be extremely faint, so we need a much bigger mirror to collect the light from these very faint sources and allow us to actually capture images. One of the really great things about Hubble is that when we built it, we built it to do three or four major science goals. It achieved those science goals, but it also was such a major change in capability. It's been able to make breakthroughs in just about every area of astrophysics that were never even contemplated when the telescope was built. And we really expect that with Webb, this is going to be the same. We're building it to study the very first galaxies that occurred into the universe, to understand how the universe has evolved over time. Closer into our own galaxy, we want to understand what the life cycle of stars actually is, and also how planetary systems form around stars. So we have a lot of really interesting science to be done with this telescope. We fully expect it's going to make discoveries in areas that we can't even think about right now.